presentation today is by Christine Ristaino and Hong Li. And today we have Christine Ristaino with us. And she is here today to talk to us about a transformative learning approach, supporting reflections in foreign language curriculum. So welcome and over to you, Christine. And I actually am also presenting with Han Li, and I think you have an introduction for her too. Would you mind? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't. Okay. I will check for you, but uh, I will check in the. Unfortunately, I don't have it in my list. I'm sorry, oh, Christine. Okay. There is that, the that's other the thing. Please let that Hong introduce herself, if that's all right. Is she is she here? She's here. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That would be lovely. Uh, Hong, do you want to introduce yourself? Ah uh, yes, hi. Uh, I'm Hong Li. I uh, teach Chinese language and culture and linguistics in the Department of Russia and the East Asian languages and cultures at Emory University. So this present presentation is about a project that I and my Chinese colleagues did in fall of 2018. Thank you so much, Hong, and uh, and and thank you, Louisa, for the wonderful introduction.、Uh, so we'll be focusing mostly on the concept of structured reflections in this presentation. And a structured reflection just means thinking about and evaluating your experiencing、uh, your experiences in a way that leads to positive change and growth. Oftentimes, it is the teacher who structures the reflection for the students. So, structured reflections are based on the topic of learning to see things from different perspectives, a topic articulated in Stephen Brookfield's 2012 book, Teaching for Critical Thinking: Tools and Techniques to Help Students Question Their Assumptions. As a scholar of adult education, Brookfield in 2012 regards the ability to see things from different viewpoints as one of the four processes that comprise the construct of critical thinking. It's worth pointing out that the construct of perspective and perspective shifting is, of course, not new to foreign education. Uh, for a language education, that is, Michael Grimm's model of intercultural learning, for example, makes mention of perspective shifting. While the World Readiness Standards accord perspective as a major role in its framework for teaching culture, but the approach we bring today considers perspective from a broad educational position, one not solely tied to cultural content as part of a curriculum. But rather speaks to perspective making from a wider holistic lens that involves individual personal development. So to go deeper into this idea, this more holistic approach takes into account the identity of both the student and the culture he or she is studying. Jordan Francis, in his article Academia, recons.、Uh, his, I'm sorry, his article in Academia. Titled "Reconceptualizing the Native Speaker" in 2019, talks about how the field has recognized the need to make learners demonstrate a pragmatic intercultural communicative competence, as opposed to transforming students into native speakers. Intercultural competence is the ability to function effectively across cultures, to think and act appropriately, and to communicate and work with people. From different cultural backgrounds at home or abroad, intercultural competence is a valuable asset in an increasingly globalized world, where we are most more likely to interact with people from different cultures and countries who have been shaped by different values, beliefs, and experiences. And structured reflection is vital to achieving this competence. Interculturality as a pedagogical approach. Aims to enable learners to accept that people integrate rather than assimilate into a culture. Thus, students maintain their own unique identities when interacting with others, while also learning and respecting the cultural laws and values of the culture they are studying, and reflecting on the human condition in a much more culturally informed way. 
Through this process, they are able to reflect on their own assumptions and experiences, and through new experiences with the, with the target culture, culture re reconceptualize their beliefs and integrate new information into their identities and belief systems. The idea of building intercultural competence and its relationship to how students develop the skills around this concept through guided reflection is captured well in Anderson and Cunningham's graphic in 2009, where the arrows represent movement of guided reflection that connect these different spheres of knowing as students reflect on moments when these different ways of knowing are different or discordant, then they are in a position to experience rich, perspective, transformational um, change in a co-constructed way. So I'll now hand the program over to my colleague, Han Li, who will speak about how Chinese studies at Emory utilize structured reflection in its classes. Thank you, Han. Thank you, Christine, for uh, introducing the theoretical background for this project. Um, so in the fall of 2018, I worked with two Chinese instructors, Professor Yang and Professor Liu. Um, we assigned three reflection journals in Chinese 101 class. The class consisted 67 students in three different sections. And our reflection focus is on learning Chinese and learning Chinese characters. Um, the reflections are part of the student's final grade. Um, it's 5% of their final grade. Um, for each journal, we have a specific focus. The first journal focusing on students' assumptions uh, they have to describe their assumptions prior to entering the class about Ch learning Chinese and Chinese characters. The second um, journal focusing on deeper investigations of the assumptions that they have articulated in their first journal based on their learning experience and the last journal focusing on evaluating their learning experiences and considering the educational value of learning Chinese. So the three journals provides, um, provides uh, opportunity for them to reflect from, reflect from the beginning to towards the end of the semester. Uh, for each Reflection journal, there are some specific questions that the students have to answer. Uh, just to save time, I'm not going to read all of the questions, but they are projected on the screen. Um, so the first questions for the first journal, again, focusing on describing their assumptions. And the questions for the second journal, asking students to pick up one or two assumptions that they described in their first journal and talk about new insights they have gained based on their learning experience and whether their perspectives have shifted. The last journal asks students to talk about how their learning experience has evolved uh, throughout the, the learning process and whether they have made con some, uh, connections and how the learning experience affect their general attitude, motivation, and overall goals for learning Chinese. Um, so by reading through all three journals after the semester um, ended, we discovered several themes based on what they wrote. Uh, first, seems that their assumptions for learning Chinese and Chinese characters have the following characteristics. For example, the majority of them discussed uh, it's very difficult and it's impossible to learn and it's way too confusing. 
Um, before learning Chinese, they thought the characters were simply a weird line, they randomly put together, um, incredibly complicated. But at the same time, they also expre expressed their interest because they were fascinated by the characters and by how uh, beautiful they look. So there is some fear, but also a deep-rooted curiosity for learning characters. Um, we did really observe some shifting of their perspectives as they engage more and more in the process of learning. We discovered the word, however, is used very frequently in a second journal when they really uh, look deeper into their assumptions. For example, students said, learning Chinese would not be as hard as I thought it would. Um, my initial assumption was that it was hard and challenging to learn. And as of now, I would still say it's the same. However, as I continue to go to Chinese events, conversation tables, peer mentor sessions, I have realized that Chinese is more manageable to learn. So we see a, a shift from the one extreme of being almost impossible and with fear to having a good understanding and positive thinking, you know, considering that they are able to, to learn Chinese. Um, this is more I have more examples, but I try to save time and not to be uh, to read all of them. This student mentioned a complete transformation of his perspective for learning Chinese in this um, in this part of his journal. And uh, this uh, student focused on talking about learning Chinese characters. At first, uh, he only saw confusion. In, in the characters, but as time goes by, he takes more pride in knowing a plethora of Chinese characters. And uh, this, this student mentioned how learning Chinese provided a new perspective on, on linguistics in general because the student was used to the subject, verb, object, word order. However, learning Chinese seems to broaden uh, the student perspective to see that there are different ways of structuring your thoughts and the work of organizing them into language. Um, in this, it's more of a summary. So overall, the more I learn Chinese, the more I feel like it is not the kind of language that I first per per uh, perceived as impossible, too expressive, and unnecessarily hard. However, as indicated by the language long history, there is so many potential convenience and the wisdom behind each Chinese character. The more I learn, deeper about Chinese, the more appreciative I became. Another theme that um, the Chinese professors observed is that it's connection making. Um, students seem to be able to connect the characters and find the patterns through the radicals, which is the part of the characters that indicate meaning. Um, and also their phonetic components. For example, they talked about how um, some characters borrow another character's sound and thus have similar visual appearance, and some memorize new words by using parts from the words that they already know. And uh, this one student talked about the best way for me to memorize is to associate them with their related words and create a story within the different strokes. So uh, she showed one character, which means school, 
uh, but the composition is on the left. Left depicts a tree, and on the right side is the phonetic component. However, she imagined two children holding hands next to a tree at school. So, very interesting story, but it, for her, it was helpful. Um, in terms of connection making, students were also able to connect their Chinese class and uh, with their daily lives. For example, students would uh, try to use Chinese, text friends who know Chinese and talk to them in Chinese. Um, students also notice basic characters in writing and hearing people out, outside of the class speaking Chinese. Um, they feel accomplished to be able to uh, have a good base as they uh, as they pro making progress. And they also watch Chinese movies or interviews of Chinese celebrities on YouTube. And then you say, my ears sometimes catch words I have heard. Connection making also involves making deeper connections with family and with friends. Um, so they text in Chinese with class, with close friends. This one student said that a few weeks ago, I actually managed to have a primitive conversation with a Chinese friend, which I am extremely proud of. So I, I think to have this sense of accomplishment is really, really important in the process of learning. Um, the last student here talks about how much more he felt he had connected with his family through including just a few Chinese words in their conversations. Um, connection also involves connecting language learning with Chinese culture activities. Um, this semester, we had a Chinese film festival. We uh, asked Chinese international students to uh, have conversations with learners, and we require them to uh, particip participate in lectures about Chinese culture. So all of them um, seem to expand their learning experience. Um, the last theme is more of a specific for learning Chinese, which is we discover what kind of strategies students develop as they learn more and more characters. So this summarizes the strategies that students mentioned in their journal. Um, I distributed this handout to the students so that they can see what other students are doing and what worked for other people and try something new as they learn to uh, memorize more and more characters. Um, so to just to sum, sum up the things, I have five more minutes, okay. I think the benefits of assigning reflection journals is that it really makes learning visible because we, we usually only see their progress from their ex, you know, examinations or their speaking in class. But in the journal, this specifically tells us what they have learned. Um, and we also see how they articulate the shifting of their perspectives. We see their struggles, you know, their frustrations. They really tell us, but we also experience their delight, you know, to see, wow, they, we, I am actually really making a difference. And that's a great feeling for us as the instructor as well. And we see how their learning strategies evolve. You know, at the beginning, they kind of having difficulty approaching just so many characters, but gradually they develop their own system that work for them. Um, so we think that, you know, for learning Chinese, and perhaps this is applicable to uh, other languages, 
which is to really provide opportunities so that they can in, apply the language they learn in their daily lives. And that's something they ap appreciate and also they truly develop this sense of appreciation for the language. They feel proud and they are more motivated in doing so. Uh, another thing is whenever possible, I think we as instructors should strive to make connections with allow the students to connect with other people, whether it's their classmates, friends, family, uh, teachers, so that we expand their horizon for uh, their learning. And it helps us to be aware of how students learn and making adjustments in the process of our teaching. I'm almost done. so. Um, so we asked the students in the end to do a survey and tell us what they think of this project. We do have some positive response. Um, they tell us it provides a space for them to reflect on their learning, to pause for a moment, and to think about what worked, what didn't work. Um, and it, so related to that, it, it is for them to understand how they learn. Um, but then at the same time, we, we also have some suggestions. For example, one student told me that, oh, it should be optional, or I wanted some different questions to address in those journals. Um, one student just told us, oh, I didn't see the point of it. Um, so. <laughs> Um, we have room to improve, but we think it was a valuable project. Okay. Um, this is how we, we evaluated. I'm not sure if we have time, but if you are interested, it's on the slide. It's the, our rubric for evaluating student journal. This is an example of an answer to our first question of the first journal. And on the right, we listed why we give the student a very good grade because uh, there's a lot of detail. There is specific examples of how students connected their experience to, to outside of the, their experience outside of class. The writing is really good and so on. So uh, that's the end of the conclusion. We welcome any questions, and we look forward to discussions with you. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much for your presentation. Questions now from the floor. There's some comments, certainly, in, in the chat for you. Are there any questions? Oh The question is, um, what language is used for the journal, for example? Um, the, the journal is in English. Students mm -hmm. write in English. Okay. Uh, because they say that sometimes perhaps the students don't sound like they are native speakers of English, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we do, we had students from Korea and Japan mm -hmm of other mm -hmm. countries. Um, mm -hmm. I think based on the rubric, you can see the uh, mostly students are evaluated based on the content of their uh, of their mm -hmm. journal. If there are, you know, English grammatical issues, I'm not a native speaker to begin with, but if I know it, I would make corrections, but hardly I would deduct points for that. But then regardless of their English proficiency, they should be able to express their ideas clearly and coherently. Okay, thank you. Was there another question from the audience? There are a few more comments going on. In, in the chat, so that's good to see. 
I had one thing I wanted to add to Hans' answer. Just um, in Italian studies, we allow students to respond in a mix of Italian and English. So they can write some in Italian, some in English. It's up to them. They could write it all in English mm -hmm. or all in Italian, and we don't write the grammar either. Mm -hmm. We let them express things how they want to. Mm -hmm. Higher level language classes, yes, in Chinese 101, um, it's very difficult to really fully articulate it in Chinese. So they all wrote English. Okay, for sure. Well, thank you very much for your.